Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We extend a special welcome to all those visiting us this morning. This Mass is being offered for David Marks. All are welcome to join the Rosary Altar Society for their day of reflection on Saturday, October 9th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the Malasa Center, led by Lorraine Hess, that's me. Registration information is in the bulletin. Please join us on Monday, October 4th for, at 5.30 p.m. for our annual Blessing of the Pets. We will gather in the grassy area between the parking lot and the church. Our parish fair is October 29th and 30th, Friday and Saturday only. See the bulletin for details. The next married night out is October 9th, beginning with tailgating on Gator Field at 515. Registration is on our website at scschurch.com backslash night out. And we invite everyone after this mass to the Malasan Center for a fellowship Sunday where there'll be coffee and donuts. At this time, we ask you to please silence your electronic devices and stand and sing our gathering song number 539, All Creatures of Our God and King, number 539. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning. Today in the Gospel, the Pharisees try to trap Jesus into saying that marriage is not meant to be a permanent institution. And he go, Jesus goes all the way back to the beginning of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, where he reveals God's original plan for man and wife, a man and woman to get married. In order to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for his mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you bring peace and pardon to the sinner. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give us the gift of the Spirit to strengthen us on our Christian journey. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to faithful love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them, would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be suitable partners for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why... A man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from a letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he, for a while, was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God, he might take death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, what did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his, mother, his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this, and he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I recently heard of a couple who was celebrating their golden wedding anniversary and they were being interviewed about how they, they made it so long in marriage. And when the interviewer said, in all of that time, did you ever consider divorce? The wife said, oh no, not divorce. Murder sometimes, but not divorce. A topic that we've all been affected by in some way or another is marriage and divorce. We all have people we know, parents, cousins, siblings, or even our own marriages that have ended in divorce. More than 50% of all marriages end in divorce and Catholic statistics are not much better. Marriage is one of the most joyous events in someone's life. And getting divorced is one of the most painful experiences someone can, can encounter. It's a prevalent issue today, and it was also a very relevant issue in Jesus' time. King Herod had married his brother's wife, Herodias, violating the Mosaic law. And John the Baptist stood up to him and let him know that that was not okay. And as a result of that, he was beheaded. He lost his life. In today's gospel, the Pharisees were setting a trap for Jesus to see whether he agreed with John the Baptist's teaching on marriage or whether he would criticize the law. But Jesus did not fall into the trap that they set for him. Jesus goes all the way back to the beginning of the scriptures, to the book of Genesis, which we heard in the first reading, and reminds us of God's plan for marriage. 
Jesus unequivocally de uh, declared that the bond of marriage comes from God and not man, and therefore it is permanent and indissoluble. What God has joined, man must not separate. Jesus' teaching then, and the church's teaching now, is that marriage has it ha it's always been consistent. Marriage is between one man and one woman, and that they enter into marriage through this free exchange of vows. And it's the profession of these vows before God that causes them to enter into this unbreakable covenant of love until death do them part. A married, couple, a married couple's vocation, their path to heaven, is through their marriage. Now, if someone's path to heaven is through their marriage, then why is marriage so hard? Why do so many marriages struggle and fail? I think there are many reasons for this. People try to go at it alone, without God. People take for granted their spouse, or they start viewing their spouse through a negative lens. People can be selfish. They want what they want, how they want it, and when they want it. Humanity is fallen, sin is alive, infidelity, addiction, there are mental health issues. Marriage can take a back seat because of just the busyness of life, work, children, other personal goals. And some people just lack an understanding of what the sacrament of marriage is all about, that it requires sacrifice, service, putting the needs of your spouse ahead of your own. So knowing that marriage is so hard, what can we do to strengthen marriages? First, we can choose God daily. We can work on our own relationship with God. Marriage is a sacrament instituted by God, and therefore God should be part of it. When we try to do it alone without God, it doesn't work. We can pray for our spouse, with our spouse, and we can pray for guidance. We can try to grow in Christ-like qualities, openness, intimacy, compassion, forgiveness, and selflessness. Second, to strengthen marriages, we can choose our spouse daily. Marriage is not a, a one-time decision when you make your vows at the foot of the altar. You have to intentionally choose your spouse each and every day. Life and marriage is difficult, but you choose to stay through the good and the bad. As the one married couple I was talking to yesterday said, it's simple. It doesn't mean that it's easy. A married couple, a uh, friend of mine, they have a sign above their bed uh, and this is what it says, I choose you, and I'll choose you over and over and over, without pause, without a doubt, in a heartbeat. I keep choosing you. To stay married, you have to make a daily decision to choose your spouse and to choose to stay married. Third, to strengthen our marriage, you have to continue to date. You have to intentionally make time to be alone with your spouse. Once you're married, you should never stop dating. You should never stop doing all those romantic things that you do and allow your, your focus to go on to your children or your work or whatever other goals you might have. While all those things are not bad, they should just never take the place of giving your marriage a priority. Marriage is like a fire in a fireplace. If you don't tend it, eventually the flame will go out. At St. Catherine, we recognize the importance of this, and so last year we started offering these date nights where we invite couples to come here. We have a happy hour, followed by a, a brief talk by a married couple, followed by a brief talk by a priest, and then we send married couples out on a date, alone, to go spend time with each other without a bunch of other people or their children or whatever. So our next married night out is gonna be next Saturday. We invite couples to come to the vigil mass. We'll have a holy, uh, not a holy hour, a happy hour on the field, and then uh, we'll come into the church, we'll have a couple, and then Father Andrew will speak, and then we'll send you out on a date night. Uh, the, the theme is home field advantage. How do you have a home field advantage in your marriage? So if you'd like to sign up for that, it's free. We just want to know how many we're coming so we can prepare. Uh, it's scschurch.com slash night out. Last year, every time we offered it, we had about 120, 130 couples that showed up. So hope you can join us next Saturday. Fourth thing we can do to strengthen marriages is to remain steady. Couples will inevitably go through rough times. It's not a matter of if, but when. And the number one thing that all couples need to remember is that comes from our, my favorite saint, St. Ignatius of Loyola. He says, never make a life-changing decision in a time of turmoil. Let me say that again. Never make a life-changing decision during a time of turmoil. Now this applies to marriage, but actually applies to, to all situations that we might face in our lives. Now sometimes after exploring all the options, after intentionally working hard on a marriage, Sometimes divorces occur. 
Sometimes it's through no fault of one of the parties. And while the church always holds up the ideal of marriage and God's plan for marriage, the church realizes that sometimes divorce is okay in some situations. Sometimes it's not only okay, but it's necessary for the good of the individuals or for the good of the children. I recently met somebody who has been away from the church for decades, and I asked her, I was like, hey, why? And she said because she thought she had to stay away because she was divorced. I explained to her that just because she was divorced does not mean that she could not come to church and be involved. So there's a lot of common misconceptions when it comes to the Catholic Church, divorce, and marriage. I want to clear up some of those misconceptions. If you're divorced, you're not excommunicated from the church. If you're divorced, you're not forbidden from receiving the Eucharist. If you're divorced, you are not forbidden from receiving the sacraments. The only time the church invites someone to, re to refrain from receiving communion is if they're divorced and remarried outside of the church without seeking an annulment. Now, annulments are a whole other topic that have a lot of misconceptions. We don't have time for that because there's a Saints game at noon. So if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to join, uh, to, to help you, to journey with you. You can call me and I'll, I'll help you with that. So those who are divorced, it's impossible for someone who's not divorced to know the pain and the hurt that you feel and that you experience over and over again. And maybe you're experiencing right now as I open this difficult topic. I want, to I want you to hear me loud and clear. You are welcomed here, you are loved, and you have a place in our church community, and you are not alone. If there's anything that we can do to journey with you, to support you, to walk with you, please let us know. Father Andrew and I, the deacons, everybody's here to support you. So those who have not been affected by divorce, please do not take for granted your marriage. Work hard. Those who got divorced never thought on their wedding day that they would be getting divorced. Aside from working hard on your marriage, we all have a responsibility to reach out to those who have experienced divorce, who might feel isolated, who might feel alone, who might not feel they have a place, to reach out to them and let them know that they do have a place at St. Catherine. St. John Paul II once said, as the family goes, so goes the nation, and so goes the whole world in which we live. If you look around our country and our world, and we don't like the direction that we're going, we have to look no further than our own families. Families are the basic unit of society. If we have strong, faith-filled families, which come from strong, faith-filled marriages, then we will have a stronger country and a stronger world. So as we celebrate the Eucharist today, we pray for all married couples that they may be strengthened in their relationships. We pray for all those marriages who are struggling right now, that God may give them the courage to seek the help they need to honestly face their struggles in their marriage. We pray for all those who have experienced divorce, that they may know God's healing and peace. And we pray for all families that they may be strengthened, that we may have faith-filled families which help change our country and our world. I invite the members of the RCA to come forward for their blessing and dismissal. Friends, today we have shared a gospel message that challenges many of our society's commonly held notions about marriage. No doubt through your journey of conversion, you have begun to reevaluate some of those attitudes that espoused by our culture. Know of our prayerful support as you continue to align your lives to the gospel of Christ. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as you go forward and learn more about our faith. Now I invite you to please stand as we profess our faith as together we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who at the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. That the church continue to guide and teach us in faith and be a living witness to the compassionate love of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we show by our words and actions that every human life is cherished and chosen, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as a parish, we might help the oppressed, free the captives, console the sorrowing, feed the hungry, and give shelter to the weak, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of fidelity, that we may each be faithful to our promises and commitments to spouses, children, parents, communities, and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Prom Succor, we may be pr protected from all damage to life and property during the hurricane season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause to pray in the silence of our hearts for our personal intentions. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Continue to pray for Father Ronnie, for Deacon Don, and for all those who are sick in need of God's healing as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <clears throat> now I invite you to join me in praying our family prayer found on the back cover of your hymnal. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Prompt Succor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, hasten to help us. Mother Henriette DeLille, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Please be seated. If you'd like to make an offering today, we invite you to come forward and place in the two baskets on the front steps of the sanctuary. I know many of you give online, so thank you for the many ways you support our mission. Our song for the preparation of gifts is number 602, I Have Loved You, number 602.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving, thank, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of your saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Catherine of Siena, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence 
we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Gregory our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song is number 299 in the Blue Voices hymnal, Where Charity and Love Abide, number 299. Seven, sacred silence, number five, four, seven.
silence, holy ocean, gentle water washing over me. Help me listen, Holy Spirit, come and speak. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. A couple quick announcements. Immediately after Mass, we have uh, Fellowship Sunday in the Melanson Center, coffee and donuts. All the children, tell your parents you want to go get coffee and donuts in the Melanson Center. We'll see you after church. This Monday is the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, and we traditionally bless pets. So if you have a pet and you'd like to have your pet blessed, uh, please bring them to the outside the church. There's some grassy area right here. At 5.30 on Monday night, we'll have the blessing of the pets. Next Saturday, we have a, uh, the Rosary Ultra Society has a day of reflection with Lorraine Hess. You can uh, see the bulletin for details about that. And then I told you in the homily about the Married Night Out, scschurch.com slash night out, if you'd like to sign up for that next Saturday night. I hope you all have a blessed day, and go saints. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by the way we live. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our song for sending forth is number 39 in the Missalette, God We Praise You, number 39. God, we praise you. God, we bless you. God, we name you Sovereign Lord, mighty King whom angels worship, Father by your church adored. All creation shows your glory, heaven and earth draw near your throne, singing holy, 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 Lord of Oh, 
martyrs once unknown, unheeded, join one growing song of praise. While your church on earth confesses one majestic trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God our hope is.